<clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4. As we come to this table, we're, we come to remember. And remembering is something that you have to, we have to uh, throw ourselves into this, uh, to labor to remember. There are exhortations in Scripture that uh, that touch this this matter. That Paul told Timothy, Med meditate on these things and give thyself wholly to them. So this is this is not just something that's that's picked up easily. Remember, remember Jesus in Philippians chapter uh, four. It's been given a, li a that list of things. It says whatsoever is holy and pure and praiseworthy and godly and think on these things so, to uh, uh, apply yourself to to this to this work and uh, Peter used a, a phrase that's intriguing uh, to me it says gird up the loins of your mind so this, this is like like something that you've got to be equipped to do gird up to, in, to remember Jesus we, you've got to you've got to be like tooled equipped to do this gird up the, the loins of your mind to, to think about Jesus. So in, in uh, uh, helping us do this, I want to read Ephesians 4, verse 32. Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So I, I want to help you think about this that is said here. God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now, the fact is that we have to have Jesus to come to God. God has to have Jesus to accept us. God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Now, it's, it's good to know that God forgives. This is, this is part of the gospel. God, he forgives. This is a message that gives joy gives it it makes us thankful it, it lifts the the burden of guilt that God forgives Amen. forgiven forgiven people are humble people forgiven people are willing people forgive this is, forgiveness does does a lot forgiven people are forgiving people also so and forgiveness makes us free from the from the debt of, of sin. So it's good to know that God forgives. But with enemies all about us, not only around us, but also in us, it's not enough to just know that God has forgiven. This text tells us why he's forgiven. God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. The gospel is not only the message that he does forgive, it's also the message of why he forgives. Amen. It's not going to work in the, in the heat of the battle, in resisting the devil. It's not always going to work to just simply say at, at every confrontation, at every attack, it's not always going to work to just simply say, I'm forgiven. The devil makes strategic attacks and intelligent advances against the saints. It does remain that the devil can point at me and remind me of sins that I've committed after I believed, after I came in. He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to make something up. He is, he is the father of lies, but he doesn't have to lie to me about, about something that I've committed. He can point to the real thing. So, and so he, can, he can stir up the old man. He can ask questions. He asks questions of Jesus. If you be the son of God. See, then he said, then turn this. If, if, so he's, he can say this to us too. If you're really born again, you wouldn't have done that. If you were really born again, you wouldn't have thought that. If you were really born again, you've probably heard, you, you've probably wrestled with, with things like this before. And so it's, it's not enough to just simply say, I'm forgiven. 
You're, you're going to have you're going to have to have some more, some more ammunition, so to speak. Our enemy is a deceiver. He's not like a sniper. He's not going to take you. He's not going to take you out with something totally unknown, totally unseen, tot like like lurking in the in the shadows, behind the scenes. This is not how how he how he works. He engages men with lies. He he tempts men with thoughts, and so we must resist him and we must quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. So memorizing John 3:16 is a good place to start. But memorizing John 3:16 is not going to suffice for a lifelong battle. We've got to know that not only that he does forgive, but that for Christ's sake he hath forgiven. Now the Lord has demonstrated this this uh, truth of for Christ's sake hath forgiven. That that means we've been forgiven because of what somebody else did. Now that that's that that truth is is familiar to us because we talk about it. But this is, this is like revolutionary. We are forgiven what we did because of what somebody else did. We're forgiven for Christ's sake. Esther was a demonstration of this. All the Jews were delivered because Esther, the queen, had access to the king. Yeah. Now, not, not it, it wasn't that one Jew, one person went to the king and made requests for the sake of all the Jews. So all the Jews were, were delivered because of what one person did. That, that, was, like, that was like the Lord... He was, in these old times, he was, he was starting to introduce humanity to, this, this is what I'm going to do for all of humanity, not just that one generation. This is what I'm going to do. Israel was, the whole camp was about to be eliminated at the, at the mount after they come out of, out of Egypt, except that Moses prayed for them. The, they were all delivered because Moses prayed for them on account of one man's prayer and the and Moses besought the Lord for the sake of your name they were all they were all delivered they were all spared because of the prayer of one man the day of atonement was all about what somebody else did for you that's how the whole thing worked they didn't take turns and all the Israelites go into the holiest of all one at a time. Now, now you take your sacrifice. Now you take your sacrifice. It was one man appeared in the holiest of all for, for them all. They were blessed because of what someone else did. Though, see, forgiveness is not a random act of kindness. The gospel is not a random act of benevolence. It's also, forgiveness is not a temporary suspension of the rules so that you can you can kind of slip in while we, while we bend the rules, you come into the kingdom. That's, this is not the way forgiveness works. Nothing's being done under the table in the gospel. He had, God, for Christ's sake, he's forgiven you, and it's all done out in the open. Amen. Forgiveness of sin is what we might call a fully legal transaction. Yeah. Nothing has to be covered up. Nothing's by sleight of hand. In fact, the, God uses the same standard of righteousness, his own righteousness. That righteousness, he said, there's none good, no, not one. He's concluded them all under sin. Now, in Christ, he forgives with the same standard. He hasn't changed the standard. The same, the same God now is forgiving that has, had said already, they're all under sin. And he's using the same standard of righteousness. What's changed is that Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. For Christ's sake, he hath forgiven. So Jesus, as the Lamb of God, he offered himself without spot to God. He was bruised by God. He was raised from the dead by God. And now he's seated at the right hand of God interceding for us. See, it's for Christ's sake that he hath forgiven us. Amen. This, see, this is, this is the type of, 
of uh, armory, of, of weaponry that resists the devil. See, he comes, he, the devil, he'll never remind you of Jesus. He always reminds you something about you or something about the world. He, he's never going to point, he's never going to point your attention to Jesus. But see, for God, for God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven. For, what's the devil? We're, we're reminding, the devil wants to remind you of you, and we just need to remind him of the one who bruised his head. So when we come to this table, we are, we're coming to the cornerstone. The cornerstone of forgiveness. This is, this is where we are coming. So Jesus has become the way for God to condemn sin and to forgive sin. He finds this in Jesus. He had condemned sin in the flesh, Romans chapter, chapter 8 says. And he forgives us for, for Christ's sake. So Jesus is the scapegoat and the goat that lived. Or he's the scapegoat and the goat that died at the same time. And he's the fit man that took him away from the camp. And, and he's the priest that killed. See, he, he gave his own life not, the life, not the life of another. So we are at this table. We are at the cornerstone. All of salvation is built on him. Forgiveness depends on Jesus. Cleansing is found in Jesus. A clean conscience is had in Jesus. So we come to, we come to remember him. It's for Christ's sake that he hath forgiven us.